Holy shit! You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. I don't know where to start. There's so many storylines. There's so many milestones. There's so many records. Jack Hughes went off. He went Super Saiyan. We have a Luke Hughes watch because... Quinnipiac beat the University of Michigan in the Frozen Four. So now Luke Hughes is set to join the Devils organization. And the New Jersey Devils are the new owners of the Columbus Blue Jackets. So this episode, man, I, I, I was just tossing and turning. Like, how am I going to split this up? Because I only got about 20 minutes to describe my feelings and what happened during the course of the game. So here's how it's going to go. For the first segment, I'm going to talk about the background of the game. I'll talk about the lineups because a lot of people were confused with the mindset from Lindy Ruff. I'll clarify as to what happened. Then I'll talk about some of the goal scorers besides Jack Hughes because Jack Hughes deserves his own segment. So we'll talk about that in segment number two. And like I do with every postgame recap, I will compare the stats and give the New Jersey Devils a letter grade. Before we get into the nit and grit of all those things, let's start off with some jokes. So the first joke comes from our friend Ryan Ovazinski, who is the Devils beat writer for NJ.com. So tonight he was the one who tweeted out the deserve to win meter and no surprise, it favored heavily the New Jersey Devils. So according to the deserve to win meter the New Jersey Devils had a 90.6% chance to win after so-and-so simulations. And for the Columbus Blue Jackets, it was at 9.4%. I responded to that by saying, no, 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 no. That's still too high. How do the Columbus Blue Jackets still have a 9% chance of winning? Because the New Jersey Devils dominated them from start to finish. I don't care how many simulations you've done because the New Jersey Devils, like I said, are the new owners of the Columbus Blue Jackets. So I obviously, I don't know how the simulation works uh, all that well, but I know that they use a lot of stats. They use a lot of analytics. So it's always a nice thing to see. And obviously, like I said, no surprise, it heavily favors the New Jersey Devils. But still, how do the Columbus Blue Jackets have a 9% chance of winning? They let up eight goals. Uh, when John Gillies checked into the game, he was no better. Johnny Goodrow, he uh, sat out after period number one because he felt a little ill. And not to mention, the only time the Columbus Blue Jackets scored, it really should have been a goalie interference call on their end because it was absolute bedlam in front of Vitek Vancek. But what do I know? So I don't want this episode to revolve around something bad. So yeah, the New Jersey Devils weren't able to get the shutout, but... Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and sometimes it's good to be lucky. So the Columbus Blue Jackets were able to get one goal on the board, but still, I feel as though the the calls for goalie interference are wildly inconsistent, and if the roles were flipped, I have no doubt in my mind that that goal would have been waved off for the New Jersey Devils because they had another goal waved off during the course of this game, but luckily Thomas Shatar was able to get a goal a little later, so that way it didn't even matter. And the second joke that I want to bring into light, talk about being the king's of being petty. So when the New Jersey Devils tweeted out the final score of the game, the caption read, we came here to win hockey games. That is a complete jab at Johnny Goodrow when he signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets because he said, I came here to win hockey games. Because if you guys recall, during the course of the summer, one of the final teams in the Johnny Goodrow sweepstakes was the New Jersey Devils alongside with the New York Islanders, a mystery team, the Philadelphia Flyers, and Yeah, so we know how that saga ended, and a lot of Devils fans, including myself, were a little salty about it. But nonetheless, the New Jersey Devils got the last laugh, and I remember back in, what, October, uh, when John Marino was able to, to, what, score against the Columbus Blue Jackets, the New Jersey Devils tweeted out saying, Johnny Hockey. So, Devils, king of being petty against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, let's talk about the lineup combinations going into this matchup. So, a lot of people were confused as to 
what the mindset was for Lindy Ruff going into the game because some notable scratches were Nathan Bastian and Jonas Siegenthaler. Yegor Sharangovich was able to get a crack into the lineup, and a lot of people were wondering, like, why is Brendan Smith back into the lineup? Because Kevin Ball still played. So here's the clarification courtesy of Bill Spaulding. So Spaulding tweeted out saying that Lindy Ruff said earlier today that he wanted to use everyone down the stretch so they are ready to play game to game. So for these last three games, expect some lineup shifts with the exception of of the Boston Bruins game, which is the next matchup for New Jersey Devils. I would anticipate that the New Jersey Devils are going to roll with their A team for that game because the Boston Bruins, they're also chasing history. So you know they're not going to let up. And that's a true test for New Jersey Devils because they dropped the first two matchups to the Boston Bruins at the Prudential Center back in what, like December? So like I said, that is going to be a true challenge for New Jersey Devils, and you don't want to take the Boston Bruins lightly in any which sort of way. So let's make it a little harder for them, but uh, I'm just speculating at this point. So I would expect some major lineup changes come the Buffalo Sabres game and also the Washington Capitals game. So expect some players that are not normally uh, scheduled to be scratched for a game to be scratched just to give everyone a rep, maybe give some guys a rest, and also – Everyone is ready for the playoffs, so that way no one is falling behind. And expect for Luke Hughes to make his debut either against the Buffalo Sabres or the Washington Capitals. But like I said, I'll save that for a future episode to discuss Luke Hughes and his circumstance because the storylines for this game are many, like I've been saying. So let's talk about the goals that the New Jersey Devils scored in this matchup against the Columbus Blue Jackets because – like I said, there were many, and I had a tough time trying to break it all down. So like I said, we're going to look at some of the other players not named Jack Hughes who were able to score in this game. So obviously Jack Hughes scored in period number one. Then Thomas Tatar was able to score in period number two. And talk about rebounding from adversity because, like I said, in period number one, Thomas Tatar, he originally did score the uh, initial first goal of the game. However, it got waved off because, unfortunately, Tomas Tatar was offside just by the sliver of daylight, just barely, but it was enough to constitute for an offside call, so thus it had to get waved off. But one of the things I talk about for New Jersey Devils is that how do you respond from adversity? So Tomas Tatar was able to do that and score in period number two. Then moving on, Jack Hughes once again got his second goal of the game, and then the Columbus Blue Jackets on a controversial no-goalie interference call were able to get their – First goal of the game. So, uh, yeah, they, they were able to crack into the scorebook. But like I said, Devils were dominating from start to finish. And Timo Meyer, what more can I say about him? Because I always say he likes to hang in front of the net. In this case, on the power play, he was hanging towards the side of the net. Thanks to Hughes, Brett, and once again, Meyer for lighting the lamp. They were able to capitalize on the power play. Once again, that was their second power play goal of the game. I talked about it a couple episodes ago. The power play is starting to click for the New Jersey Devils because uh, just a, a week or two ago, they were ranked 18th in the entire league for power play percentage. Now, just a what, like a game or two ago, they were ranked 14th. And now they were able to get two power play goals in this game. They also got a shorthanded goal thanks to Damon Severson. So uh, the Devils, at the right possible time, their power play is coming together. And a lot of that could be contributed towards Timo Meyer and his overall efforts. Now, moving on to period number three, Eric Halla was able to score thanks to John Marino and Jesper Boquist. So uh, Eric Halla, that's his fourth goal in the past six games. So Eric Halla has already doubled his goal total because that was his 12th of the season. So your apology to Eric Halla needs to be just as loud as your hate. I told you guys that the offense will come for Eric Halla, but he does the other things, the little minuscule things that a lot of people, including myself, didn't realize at first. And now we're starting to see what he could do in terms of racking up the points. So once again, Eric Halla, four goals in the last six games. And then Timo Meyer in the high slot, locomotive coming down the lane, able to score, makes it six to one. Damon Severson made it seven to one on the shorthanded goal. So according to Bill Spaulding, Damon Severson's shorthanded goal was the first shorthanded goal by a New Jersey Devils defenseman since John Moore in 2017. So making a little bit of history there was Damon Severson. And also got to give a shout out to Timo Meyer because once again, Meyer was able to score twice in this game. And uh, Meyer now has reached 40 goals of the year. And this is the first time in his young career that he has reached 40 goals. All, I know he got most of those goals while he was playing with the San Jose Sharks, but nonetheless, 40 goals in a single year, 
That is very impressive. And then who got the final goal of the game for New Jersey Devils? It was Ryan Graves in his 300th career game. He was able to get his 100th career point. And worth mentioning that Ryan Graves has eight goals this season and three of them have come against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So once again, a lot of milestones in this game. And we're obviously on record watch for not only Jack Hughes, but Dougie Hamilton as well. So Dougie Hamilton is still behind Barry Beck for most defensemen goals uh, in the franchise history between the New Jersey Devils and the Colorado Rockies. And he almost got it in this game. Unfortunately, it just rang in and out of the crossbar. So coming up, we're going to talk about Jack Hughes because Jack Hughes was able to reach 200 career points. And also, Nico Heischer was throwing hands this game. I'm not talking about just tugging on a jersey. He was legitimately throwing hands. So we'll talk about that in the third segment. But first, we need to talk about the truth. Jack Hughes. So once again, during the course of this game, we saw a lot of milestones, whether they were team milestones or personal milestones. We are seeing a lot of players able to just have career years. So once again, Ryan Graves in his 300th career game, he was able to get his 100th career point. Timo Meyer able to get his 40th goal of the year, first time he's done that in his career. And Damon Severson able to get the first shorthanded goal for a New Jersey Devils defenseman in what, like five or so years? So it's been a while since a defenseman for a New Jersey Devils has gotten a shorthanded goal. But Jack Hughes, Man, we, we need to look at some of uh, some of his goals during the course of this game because going back to period number one, Jack Hughes was able to make it a one to nothing game. So here's what happened. Jack Hughes was able to get the puck and he was flying down the rink and towards his side was Michael McLeod. So it was a two on one in favor of the New Jersey Devils. And Jack Hughes, instead of passing it over to Michael McLeod to possibly go back door, Jack Hughes took it upon himself to score. So this is one of the things I've been preaching about during the course of the year. For Jack Hughes, I don't care if you're slumping. I don't care if it goes in and out. I don't care if you miss it. I don't care if you whip at it. You be selfish and you do the scoring. You are still the best player on this team from a skill standpoint. So I was just like, Jack Hughes, uh, do, do not pass it. And Can Danico also praised him for not passing it. Because in that case, you need to be selfish. You need to go get yours. And like I said, during the course of that Minnesota Wild game, when Jack Hughes had like 10 or so shots on goal and he walked away with nothing, I said, I'd rather him keep shooting the puck and missing versus just be too hesitant or too scared to shoot it. And he was able to do it in that sort of way. Then going into period number two, we saw Jack Hughes once again able to score. And then later on in the game, Jack Hughes was able to get an assist on both of Timo Meyer's goals. So the first time Timo Meyer scored in this game, Jack Hughes got the primary assist. And then the second time that Timo Meyer scored in period number three, Jack Hughes got the secondary assist. So when looking at the record book for most points in a single season by a New Jersey Devils player, Jack Hughes sits at number two with 95 points this year. And right above him is the best forward to ever put on a Devil sweater in Patrick Eliash with 96. So for the first time in a good while, I saw Jack Hughes excited. I saw him lively during his post-game interview after they announced the three stars of the game because Jack Hughes couldn't help but smile. He couldn't help but just grin ear to ear and just say, like, I want that record, and I'm going to try to get that bad boy. His words, not mine. So you know that Jack Hughes wants to get that record. He spoke to Amanda Stein post-game, and he was like, uh, I'm going to be here for a good while, but why not get it now? So Jack Hughes, all he needs is two points to surpass Patrick Eliash for most points in a single season by a Devils player. And it's also worth mentioning that during the course of this game, Jack Hughes was able to surpass Taylor Hall's points total from when Hall won the Hart Memorial Trophy back in 2018. So if you remember, Taylor Hall had 93 points that year. And he won the heart. And unfortunately, Connor McDavid has like, what, 150 points. So uh, Connor McDavid is going to, in my eyes, be the unanimous MVP winner. But still, uh, Jack Hughes, what he's doing for this program, what he's doing for the state of New Jersey, it certainly should not go unnoticed because he is one of the reasons why the New Jersey Devils are in this position. And like I said, if it wasn't for Connor McDavid, 
I think Jack Hughes would have a legitimate chance of winning the Hart Memorial Trophy. And I think it's starting to put more people on notice that as to how special of a player Jack Hughes is. So even though he might not win MVP, we know in our heart to heart that Jack Hughes is our damn MVP. He is damn good. And he was able to put on a great show. Now, when looking ahead of the schedule, obviously the Devils got the Boston Bruins, then they got the Buffalo Sabres, and then they got the Washington Capitals to round out the year. So that Boston Bruins game might be a bit of a challenge, but the one thing I can uh, have some hope on is that the Devils have not been shut out at all during the course of this year. So if the Devils are able to maybe come away with the upset victory or if they're able to uh, just muster up a goal here and there, I would expect for Jack Hughes to play a factor in it, whether he's scoring or whether he's getting the assists, whatever the case might be, Jack Hughes is starting to get hot at the right possible moment of the season if he wants to break history. So I think he is definitely for sure going to at least tie Patrick Aliash because I just don't see Jack Hughes going like the, the rest of the year with no points. I think he's out of his funk. And I think we saw it during the course of that uh, Buffalo Sabres game as soon as that Minnesota Wild game ended because we saw Jack Hughes able to contribute once again. So, uh, yeah, I don't think Jack Hughes is in his slump anymore. I think he's gotten out of it, and I think he's going back to what he was able to do earlier this year. So my thing is, like, if he's able to get a point against the Boston Bruins and if he's able to have one more big night, I'm not talking about just, like, getting two points. I'm talking about a big night like he had against the – Columbus Blue Jackets, then I think Jack Hughes becoming the first player in Devils history to reach the coveted 100 points. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Now, if he's going to do it, I would say he has to do it against the Buffalo Sabres because the Buffalo Sabres are also similar to the Columbus Blue Jackets, a very young team. They don't really strike fear into you. They have a lot of good young pieces. Yes, I'm not trying to deny them. But against the Washington Capitals, I know they had a dismal year. I know they're out of the playoff hunt. But I just don't think I can, like, safely say that Jack Hughes will have a big outing against the Washington Capitals. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying, like, I would prefer he do it against the Buffalo Sabres. So if he's able to get a point against the Boston Bruins, if he's able to get a point or two against the Capitals, and if he's able to have one more big outing, one more big show against the Buffalo Sabres, then – then I'll be damned. Jack Hughes will reach 100 points, the first player in Devils history to do so. So I think it's possible. And it just raises the question, what could have happened? How many points could he have had if he didn't get hurt earlier this year? Because remember, shortly after the All-Star game, he played in one game and then he was out for a few games. So it just raised, I just can't help but think because during the course of his absence, the Devils did play the Columbus Blue Jackets. So it's just like he could have gotten a point or two there. How many points could he have right now if uh, he didn't get hurt? But I think the main goal, break Patrick Eliash's record. And like he said in his postgame interview, he's going to be here for a good while. So even if he doesn't get 100 points this year, I wouldn't put it past him to get it maybe next year or the year after. He's here for a long time. So Jack Hughes, hell of a game. So we still got one more big storyline to break down, and that's that Nico Heischer and Billy Sweezy fight because I, for the first time in a long time, I saw Nico Heischer willing to take no prisoners. So we're going to talk about that momentarily, but before we do, I want you guys to make some extra cash, so you need to head over to FanDuel. So the NBA playoffs are almost here, same with the NHL playoffs, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and a three-pointers drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets if you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba and now speaking of making extra money why not start your own business so you know what you need you need indeed so when you're drafting your fantasy team do you ever wish that you could handpick the best stars 
for your business team. If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all at Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates. So, like I said, you need to build the winning team, so you need to head over to Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your business, so you have to make every dollar count. That's why, Indeed, you only pay for quality applicants that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on, Indeed.com slash locked on. I'll repeat it a third time. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? Head over to Indeed. Okay. Before I give the final stats and give the Devils a letter grade, let's talk about the fight that took place between Sweezy and Heischer. So what happened? Well, late in the game, uh, this is like the third period, and pretty much the Columbus Blue Jackets are getting their asses handed to them, and I'm sure frustrations are boiling over. So Nico Heischer is battling for puck possession, I believe, uh, either below the goal line or near the corner. So as he's doing so, Sweezy is cross-checking him from behind. Not once, not twice, but I counted like three or four times. And Nico Heischer is like, hey, man, cut it out. And Sweezy just continued to do so. And the referees weren't calling anything. So Nico Heischer said, you know what? I've had enough. So you saw Thomas Tatar. He got into the mix a little bit. Then Nico Heischer took off his gloves, and he was ready to start swinging and fighting. As soon as Tatar got into the mix, Heischer was like, I'm ready to battle you. So he started throwing some punches and uh, there was no winner or loser, but I still saw Nico Heischer able to put up a decent fight. And I was so proud. I'm like, Nico Heischer is fighting. What the, what, what's going on? What is this game? Like, like I said, like uh, early on in the episode, it wasn't like Nico Heischer was like grabbing his Jersey and just trying to ruffle some feathers. He was actually throwing punches and, uh, surprisingly Sweezy and Heischer they didn't get any majors so they just had to serve a two-minute minor but the person who did get a major was Kevin Ball because he got a 10-minute game misconduct in addition to a two-minute minor so Kevin Ball was essentially ejected from the game but you should have seen Kevin Ball he was taking on two Columbus Blue Jackets players and basically he was treating them like rag dolls like it was nothing so it was just like dude I'm not you're you're nothing compared to me like well, why are you even trying to fight me? So, listen, I'm no Dr. Phil, but if you manage to piss off Nico Heischer to the point that he wants to fight you, you are in the wrong and you need professional help. Send Sweezy to the ranch. <laughs> Inside uh, Dr. Phil meme joke, if, if any of you get it. So, Sweezy just, wow, just cross-checking Nico Heischer. He sure didn't take any exception to it because we've already seen Nico. He sure sometimes get cross check um, very dirt in a very dirty manner because uh, the big example I use is that Austin Watson uh, fiasco that happened in Ottawa and Nico. He sure got hurt momentarily. So Nico, he sure has to be very careful, especially come playoff time. So I was very proud to see Nico. He sure fight in that case. And Kevin ball, what can I say that that boy, he's a Sasquatch Jersey Joe. Keep the name Sasquatch Squad. He, he's a Sasquatch out there, and he took no prisoners. Get off our captain. Get off our freaking captain. Okay, so like I do with every postgame recap, let's compare the stats, and then I will give the New Jersey Devils a letter grade. So shots on goal category, 36 to 17 in favor of the New Jersey Devils. Faceoff percentage, 62% to 38% in favor of the Blue Jackets. Power play, Blue Jackets were 0 for 5, and they gave up a shorthanded goal to Damon Severson. Power play, Devils were two for three. Thanks to Jack Hughes and Timo Meyer. that power play is coming to fruition. Look out, you do not want to put the Devils on the man advantage. Hits, 20 to eight in favor of the Blue Jackets. Blocks, 16 to 14 in favor of the Devils. Giveaways, Devils led that department, 13 to eight. So if I had to rate this game for the New Jersey Devils, let's see, they absolutely thrashed the Columbus Blue Jackets. A lot of players uh, were able to reach milestones. Jack Hughes and Dougie Hamilton are on the brink of breaking history once again. Um, it was a, it was an absolute whooping. Nico Heischer was fighting back. He was also playing really well. Defense was there. Does, does, is anyone surprised I'm going to give him an A? A 
plus performance by the New Jersey Devils. I couldn't think of any flaws really other. And some of the flaws were uh, honestly nothing that they could control. So like I said, the first goal that they let up for the Columbus Blue Jackets, I was like, that should have been a goalie interference. And the offsides for, for Tomas Tatar, you know, it sucks. And obviously the Devils have had a lot of goals waved off, but it is what it is. Nothing they could do. And Tomas Tatar was able to rebound in period number two. So this game was probably one of the more exciting games to watch. And like I said, there's a new ownership in Columbus, Ohio, and it's the New Jersey Devils. As for today's episode, guys, that's all the time I have for you. So it lots to break down. There was a lot to talk about, a lot of storylines, primarily with Jack Hughes. But like I do to close out every show, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again. Woo!